Time for tonight's rewrite. You know, I'm relatively new at an anchor desk here at MSNBC, so I've never actually had to say GE is part owner of this network. Jon Stewart thinks it's pretty funny that we have to do that so often. The coffee makers have the potential to overheat. G, of course, is the parent company of NBC Universal. I should mention that that fighter jet engine is built by GE, a part owner of NBC. Hospitals have been getting lots of calls about the scanners, many of them made by GE, parent company of NBC Universal. This is the most powerful engine in the world, full disclosure. It's actually made by our parent company, General Electric. GE, parent company of NBC Universal, makes a whole lot of things, including LED lights, and we should have said so. John Stewart is actually very good at explaining why we have to do that so often. General Electric is into a lot more than light bulbs and home appliances. Here's the thing about General Electric. It's a massive conglomerate with fingers in a lot of pies. Uh, media, uh, medical equipment, appliances, light bulbs, oil, real estate, uh, aviation, uh, trains, uh, weapons. General Electric is so big that it's actually this country's biggest corporation. Now, in a fair world, that would make General Electric this country's biggest taxpayer, certainly its biggest corporate taxpayer. Trouble is, as any of you who saw the front page of the New York Times today already know, General Electric's tax bill for the year 2010 is actually zero. Now, for those of you who just spilled your coffee over the tax return forms you have spread out over the kitchen table trying to figure out how much you owe the government for 2010, GE has an explanation. The New York Times story on GE's tax liability misses the biggest part of the story, which is the implications of the financial crisis. Significant losses at GE Capital are not a tax avoidance strategy. Taking out GE Capital actually makes GE's effective tax rate 21% over the past several years. So, that explains why a company that made $14.2 billion worldwide last year and $5.1 billion in the United States is paying no corporate income tax in the United States. How can you make $5.1 billion in profit in the United States and pay no corporate income taxes in the United States? To figure out how GE actually pulled that off, you would have to be able to dig into their corporate tax return. Now, these things aren't really too hard to read. Form, IRS Form 1120, U.S. Corporation Income Tax Return. You know, I used to write tax law in the Senate Finance Committee, so these things don't intimidate me. They're really pretty simple. You know, cost of goods, gross profit, dividends, interest, gross rents, gross royalties, blah, blah, blah. And the deductions list you've got uh, here actually makes perfect sense. It's things like, you know, compensation for officers, salaries and wages, repairs and maintenance, bad debts, rents charitable contributions, depletion, advertising, pension. It's just simple. And on the second page, there's a list of deductions special. These are the special deductions, the really complicated ones. There's only 17 of them, actually, right here. Uh, they're all related to dividends. The dividends can be complex, but only in 17 different ways, according to our, our tax return. Again, easy enough to understand if you know any of the language of business. And then you do your tax computation. Let's see, you do that right here on page three, up here where it says tax computation in a space that big. That's how much it, space it takes to do that. You answer a couple of more questions on page four, and you get to the end of this form, this very complicated form, on page five. And you're done. That's it. Page five, you're done. Unless, of course, you're General Electric, because when they fill out, they're 1120. It ends up expanding in order to cover every single thing they do, and that takes 24,000 pages. That's right, GE files a tax return that's 24,000 pages long. There isn't anyone working in the IRS who is capable of analyzing a 24,000 page tax return to find out just how much of a lead off the base that that tax filer might be taking. Now, you know how much latitude there is in filling out a tax return. If you take a home office deduction and you assign that portion of your rent to the 100 square feet of your home office that it represents and you deduct it, you know you can only deduct it if you never set foot in your home office to do anything unrelated to business. So if you've ever looked at TMZ on that computer in your home office or made, say, a travel re reservation for your vacation on that computer in your home office, you're fooling with that deduction. 
you're taking more of a deduction than you actually should be deducting. Now, everyone pretends that they use their home office exclusively for work. You know, it's also the same kind of thing if you make charitable contributions of any used clothing that you give away. You set the value on it. You do. You know, with a little bit of rules. That value could be $100, could be $200. It could be pretty much whatever you say it is. And what are you going to try to get away with? Are you going to try to get away with something that's on the low side, on the high side? A lot of people go for the highest possible valuation of their deductions. What's your guess about how GE approaches this? When there's a range of possibilities for a deduction, from low to reasonable to unreasonable, what do you think? You think they ever pick low? You think they ever pick low reasonable? You ever pick reasonable? You know how many people it takes at GE to create a 24,000 page tax return? Well, no one knows. GE doesn't even really know. All they know is that in their tax department, they employ 975 employees to create that 24,000 24, page tax return. They also have input from outside accountants and tax lawyers on those tax returns. So it takes at least 1,000 people. That's a modest figure. That's an underestimate. At least a thousand people to file a GE tax return. And they know they're sending it to an agency that is undermanned, that is kept undermanned and ill-equipped by Republicans who refuse to fully finance it. They know they're sending it to an agency that cannot make any attempt to seriously evaluate that tax return. So how big a lead off the base do you think GE takes with its deductions? GE has submitted shocking tax returns in the past. So shocking that when Ronald Reagan heard about it, he wanted to overhaul the tax code. Quote, I didn't realize things had gotten that far out of line. That's what President Reagan told his Treasury Secretary when he discovered how much GE, his former employer, was not paying in taxes. That led to the 1986 Tax Reform Act, which got rid of many egregious corporate tax loopholes. Since then, many of those loopholes have crept back into the tax code and many new ones have been invented. GE and many other American corporations pay good money to Washington lobbyists to keep those loopholes open so that the corporate share of American tax revenue has fallen from 30 percent of all federal revenue back when Ronald Reagan was an actor in the 1950s to 6.6 percent in 2009. Now I for one, for the sake of argument anyway, am willing to take GE's word for it when they say our accounting and tax positions fully comply with all applicable rules and regulations. That is the problem. The tax code is allowing them to get away with paying no taxes. Perhaps GE's outrageously legal tax return will once again provoke a move for real tax reform in Washington. A rewrite of the corporate tax code should be undertaken more than once every 25 years because corporate lobbyists are working their way into that, ta that tax code every single day. Their dirty work has to be weeded out on a regular basis. And nothing, nothing proves that better than GE's tax return.